this day we come together to praise his name. It will hit the throne room of God. And the power of God will begin to rain down on us. It is not that God is withholding his blessings from us. It is that he wants us to position ourselves in a place that we're ready to receive. I don't care how much is poured out. If you don't, if you got a lid on, there will nothing ever get in. So I'm asking God that he would take the lid off. Please, Lord. Off of our mind. Off of our heart. That we have so many things that's blocking, that's that's trying, trying to get in the way that that different things have happened and things have gone on and, and he's trying his best to try to keep the blocker on. But I'm praying that God will open us up. That he can fill us up. That you know when he begins to start pouring and we're really open, that anything that's in there, have you ever, have you ever had something in the bottom of a glass and you kept pouring water in it? And after a while, that was in the bottom, started flowing out. Yes. That's what the Holy Spirit wants to do with us. Yeah, there's some stuff in us. There's some stuff that's laying, that's laying there. But when, when the Holy Spirit begins to pour, and He keeps on pouring, that all that stuff that was in there starts flowing out. That envy starts flowing out. Jealousy will move out of the way. All, right. All these things that we've been trying to hold and act like it ain't, it ain't our issue, but I want to tell you it is. Yeah. And God want to pour in yeah. until it come out. So we're going to pray together. We're going to agree in, in the name of Jesus. And then we're going to give way that our praise team will come. I'm going to ask as we have to be praying that I'm going to Turn over the service and ask Minister Wheeler if she will preside over the rest of the service until preaching time. Because right now I just feel like preaching right at this second. Because right. oh, there is nothing too hard for God. Oh, God. Nothing at all too hard for God. Oh, God. Father, we thank you that on this glorious day, that you have made for us. We have no complaints. None whatsoever, God. Because many, Lord God, went to bed last night and thought that they would get up this morning. But they didn't answer the call. But early this morning, Lord God, you called our body. Our eyes came open. Gave the ability to move. Thank you. Then the scripture said that when you woke us up, you gave us brand new mercy. Can't go back on yesterday. Tomorrow is not promised. But new mercy we have right now. Help us to take that new mercy, God, and live better than we did on yesterday. Thank you for the joy of the Lord being our strength. Thank you to Heavenly Father that we have the ability to lift our hands and to open up our mouth and to bless your name. For truly you're worthy of glory, worthy of the honor and worthy of the praise. Father, we acknowledge that without you we are nothing. But with you, all things are possible. Thank you, that Lord God, that we have a possibility today to be healed, to be saved, to be set free, and to be delivered. I pray, God, that your anointing would flow all around and throughout this place. That it will flow through our Facebook Live. Lord God, that every person that hears the sound of our voice, God, will know that, Lord God, that they have been touched by the power of your Spirit. For, Father, you are not bound in any way, moved by your power. Forgive us, Lord God, of those things that we have done and said or not done and said. Lord God, we repent this morning. 
and ask for another chance to do it right. Father, make us one as you and the Father are one. Let us mind, Lord God, not high things, but bring ourselves down to the place where we can, Lord God, love on each other like we need to love on each other. That we can forgive each other like we need to forgive each other. And we can walk humbly before our God. Father, we pray for those that are going through sickness this morning. I don't want to name all the names, but you know every person that has asked and request. Lord, yes, I will. I, I, I'll pray and I ask you, Lord God, that you would touch Deacon and, and Deacon Bunton and Sister Bunton today, God. That you would strengthen them right now in the name of Jesus. I pray for some of you this morning, Lord God, and elders, you, I ask that you would strengthen them now, right now, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, not being selfish, but I ask that you would touch my wife this morning, God. I pray, God, in the name of Jesus, that you would touch Sister Honda Johnson this morning, God. I ask you, Lord God, that you would move down Mason Burr Luke, Lord God, and that you would touch Sister Heavens, Lord God, Sister Durant, Lord God, Sister Williams, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, that you would touch brother and sister Walker, Lord God. Sister Dolores, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we want to thank you that you allow Brother Billy to come into the house, but we ask that you would touch him right now while he's here. Lord, remember Sister Billy's filter privilege, Lord God. Lord, I ask you, Lord God, that you would have your way. There's others, Lord God, that we are standing in the gap for that you would touch and that you would heal. Sister Joanne, Lord God. Have your way, Lord. Then we pray, God, for those that are not saved this morning, God. The Bible says sometimes we have a form of godliness, but they're not the power thereof. But Father, I pray that the power will get in, get in, in the midst of the Lord God and that it will turn the heart of those that are not saved that they will come to be saved for real. Because church can't save nobody. Preaching in the pulpit can't save nobody. Singing on the choir can't save nobody. Lord God, usher can't save nobody. It's only through the blood of Jesus that we can be born again, Lord God, through repentance. Lord, make it personal for all of us. Bless our, our praise team as they were singing, our musicians as they were playing, Lord God, and our ushers as they were ushering your people into the house. We love you, Lord God, and we bless your name and we give you praise. If I miss anything in this prayer, I know it will be made up, Lord God, in those that will come after me. In Jesus' mighty name we do pray. And all of the saints of God said amen. amen. Somebody put your hands together and give God praise. As we go. Turn this microphone over to Minister Wheeler and ask God that he will lead her in the things that need to be done as we uh, begin with our opening selection and then we will come back from there.
Lord. We come to you this morning, dear Lord, just as humble as we can be, just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for allowing us to come to the storehouse once again. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for our family service not to be broken. Heavenly Father, I thank you for everything that you are doing for me and my church family. Yes, Heavenly Father, I pray that you touch the heart of everybody that's not here today. Touch their mind, dear Lord. Revelate their hearts, dear Lord. Let them be on, be on one accord. Yes. Bless your name, Heavenly Father. Jesus, I pray to you that you would touch our congregation from the back door to the front. Yes. Heavenly Father, I pray to you that you just let everybody in this service. Yes. Heavenly Father, let that your will be done, Heavenly Father. Let your spirit just come in this place, Heavenly Father. Let us let us know that you are here, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, I pray to you that you would just touch.
your blessings, Father. Hallelujah. Father, we commit this giving into your hands. Every heart, every mind that wanted to give, and those that did give, we ask your blessings. Multiply, Father. Make a good measure, press down, shake it together, running over in their lives. Bless them as only you can. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And Father, bless this church. Bless this church. Bless our pastor. Father God, let us come in agreement with you according to your will. Because that's our desire, Father. Our desire is to please you. And to be in your perfect will for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
that in Sunday school this morning. And I thought, well, God, you're going to try us this morning, aren't you? You're going to try us. You're going to try our love. And just because it's different doesn't mean it's wrong. I think Sister Ferguson wanted to honor the things that she said she would do. And she didn't let having the baby stop her, did she? Amen. Amen. Now, God will, will, will test us and try us. He'll test us and try us. We'll have a selection now by the choir. Without you, we can't walk. Without you, we can't talk. Without you. 
Thank you all for being here in the house of the Lord. Again, there are many who have health challenges and things that are going on and pray that they might be watching by Facebook Live since they are not able to make it to the building this morning. But I want to thank God for Minister Wheeler and presiding over this service. I want to thank Sister Ferguson for the prayer. I want to thank the evangelist for the scripture read and the praise team for the songs that were sung. Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. I want to talk to you from the thing. God is building trust in us. God is building trust in us. The word trust means to rely on, to depend on. And in this hour, there are so many people that are trusting in everything but God. The Bible says some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, some trust in their money, some trust in their job, some trust in other people. They put more, they put more confidence in a person than they would in God. Yes, yes, yes. But God says that you will have no other God before me. And so what I have to do sometimes is I have to tear down your structure. Tear down all the stuff that you have trust in. And all that stuff that you've been relying on to the point where it comes down to the bare necessity that you've got to trust God for everything. And, and when you when you come to the point of realizing that that I got to trust in God for everything that I desire, and everything that I need, you'll find that He's all that you ever needed in the first place. Amen. Brothers and sisters, that the word that we just read was not something that was just a good idea. It wasn't just a suggestion. It was a command for us yeah. that we have to yeah. trust God. We have to rely on God because all other grounds are failing. All other grounds are sinking, saying yeah. everything that we put our trust in yeah. has failed us so far. Yeah. 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 We think money is going to, going to be the answer to everything. If, we, if, if Michael Jackson was still here, he'll tell you that money don't answer, don't, it's, not, it's not the answer to everything because if it was, he'd still be here. But his desire was that he, he was taking medicine. He had billions of dollars but still not happy. Y'all seen the transformation from, from the, the old white to the new one where he bleached his skin and made his nose different because he was he was, he was he was looking for something and he couldn't find it in the stuff that he had. He had a ranch, buying elephant gold, had a monkey. All of these things he was he was getting he could, he, could, he had all the stuff that he wanted, but still would not have it. Because he was trusting in the stuff and trusting in the riches to keep him happy. Can I tell you that there's not a person on this earth that can make you happy? No. All right. But too many times we try, we try to, to get in, to get people to come in to make us happy. And I want to tell you that, that sometimes they're the reason why we're not happy. Because we spend all of our time trying to please them, trying to make them, make them love you, make them want to be with you. And then all of a sudden they push you and reject you. But I want to tell you, there's a man that won't oh. never leave you, that won't never forsake you, that you can put your trust in it, that in the midnight hour, he'll show up when the tears are running down your face, he'll show up in the midst of your room, and he'll let you know that I am always with you. But sometimes he has to, to break us down to build us up. 
Anybody in this building that God had to break some, some things down that you thought that you could trust in, he had to take all that stuff away so that you can learn how to put your life and put your, your, your trust in his hand. If you haven't experienced that, I'm telling you, it's on its way. Let me say that again. That, that, that there are some things that, that God is getting ready to do in your life. You had to be in this house today. You had to be on Facebook this morning. Because God, it, it ain't the devil. God is breaking some things down in your life to the point where you come to the point where you say, God, I need you. I can't make it without you. I, I done tried, I done tried, I done tried women, I done tried men, I done tried drugs, I done tried this, that, and the other, and nothing satisfied. Nothing. My God, my God. You can smoke all, 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 all the marijuana you want, it ain't gonna satisfy because you'll look for another high. And what I'm trying to tell you is, is that, that your trust can't be in that stuff right there. Your trust has to be in God. But if you would, if you would travel with me in the Word of God, I'm going to show you how God broke, broke a whole nation down to build them back up. God is not into the point of just breaking you down to leave you broken. But his whole purpose is to break you down so he can build you. That's what he told, that's what he told the prophet. He said, the first thing I need you to do is I need you to tear down, I need you to root up, I need you to pull down so I can build up. Because, because what we've done is, is that we've allowed stuff to be built on our heart, in our mind. That we've allowed somebody to tell us that we can't be loved. Uh, that you don't amount to enough. Yes, and we, we've been trusting all those words, but I come to tell you that God is tearing all that stuff down oh, so he can, build, he can build you back up and know that you are a whole nation, that you are a holy nation, that you are a holy people, that you're special in the sight of God. If you will travel with me over to the book of Judges, you will find that God, the book of Judges, chapter 6 and 7, but I'm, I'm just going to deal with chapter 7 for the most part. But I got to tell you what happened so we can get to chapter 7. The Bible said that the children of Israel did evil in the sight of God. Can I tell you that you can't keep doing wrong and think right going to come out of it? Let me say that one more time. You can't do wrong and keep doing wrong and think right don't come out of it. Because you reap what you sow. If you plant it, rest assured it's going to come up again. And the children of Israel done, in, in this, that's chapter 6, they done evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord took his hands off of them. And allowed their enemy yes. to come in uh -huh. and take away. Yes. See, the problem we have is, is that we think we think that, that we can fool God. No. And put stuff up and, 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 and carry a facade that we that we love God, but God knows us from the inside out. Yes, he does. So ain't no sense in us trying to play like we got it together when we none of us got it together. Amen. This is what happened. God had already told them that when I when I bless you, I'm gonna take you into a land that you didn't have to work for. Right. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you houses that you didn't have to build. I'm going to give you vineyards that you don't have to plant. All I need you to do is just go in the harvest and live and, and enjoy what I gave you. Yeah. Jesus. He said, the only thing I don't want you to do is that when you get in the land, I don't want you to flip on me. I don't want you to go change it on me. But it, 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 it's an amazing thing that when God has been good to you, that all of a sudden you take his goodness for granted. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And so what happened was they took God's goodness 
for granted. Yes. Yes, and they started serving and worshiping other gods. Yes. Instead of, they were, certain, they were still worshiping God on one hand, but they added something to it. All right. For the Bible said that they had built up a grove. And they began to worship Baal and God. See, the problem that we have is that you can't mix it. All right. Amen. You can't sing holy on Sunday. Oh, all right. We can't run the shot on Sunday and, and look holy and then the rest of the week we live in like all right. Amen. Amen. being mean to folk, being rude to people, and riding around with a WWJD on, on the back of your car. Hope <laughs> if you love Jesus and you just drove by and gave him the middle finger. <laughs> There are too many of us that's mixing Christianity and living a whole different life at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. We need to make up our mind now right. who we're going to serve. <laughs> because God requires holiness. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. He requires that we be separated he requires something different of us than the world. Yes, amen. Yes. And the Bible said that they were serving, they were serving God in one sense, but they were serving other gods too because they had options now. And God allowed their enemies to come in. And when the enemy came in, they took everything that yes. these, these people had for seven years. Yes. For seven whole years, he allowed the Midianites, he allowed the Amalekites to come in and to rob and to take. They would, play, they would go out and plant fields, and as soon as the harvest got right, yeah. here, here come the enemy coming in, tromping down and eating yeah. up and taking away. Could it be? Could it be? That every month that chick comes. And because you won't do right by what God is asking you to do, the, the million lights are coming in. All right. Call people, call progress energy. <laughs> Take it away. Can't fear war. All these things that are, are taken away and taken away. Ain't nothing being added. Everything is being taken away. So, God allowed it for seven years that they, this was going on. And so, they began, they, after seven years, they finally cried out. Why did it take us yeah. seven years yeah. to cry out to God? It was hard the first time, but they, it took them seven years. Y'all can read it. This is chapter six. It took them seven years to finally come to the point of asking God for help. Because I'm a man, I can handle it. I got this. And the problem is, they had it all right. They come to the point where when they did get a little grain, they, they had to hide it by the, by the wine press. But what they were supposed to do at the wine press was to trump out grapes so they could have juice. But, they had, but because of, of things so chaotic, they had, they had to go into the wine press to hide just to keep something. I'm going to get done in just a second. Because God was building trust in these people because he, 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 had, he had to break them down to the point where the enemy was coming in and snatching away. And I'm trying to I'm trying to help you avoid the enemy coming and snatching away because all God wants you to do is learn how to lean and depend on him, learn how to rely on him, learn how to trust him. And when he asked you to do something, you would just obey him. 
So, after seven years, and they cried out to God, the Bible said they sent a prophet. And the prophet reminded them of the things that God had already told them when he brought them into the land. He said, and the prophet came in and told him, he said, didn't the Lord tell y'all that when I bring you into the land, that you would serve no other God? But what you've done is you ran, your, your whole heart is ran after this other God. All right. Mm -hmm. God mercy. But I thank God that even when, he, when he's God. breaking us down, he's building us up at the same time. Thank you, Lord. He's tearing down on one side, but he's building on the other side. Because the Bible said he came to a man by the name of Gideon. Yes. Yes. And he called him a mighty man. And Gideon said, well, how in the world am I a mighty man? Well, my father's house is the, is the least in, in the nation. Right. And we're the poorest one around, and you're going to call me a mighty man. I ain't got nothing. And he said, where are all of these miracles that our fathers told us about? Where are all that stuff at? And God said, you go in that street. And I'm going to give you victory. I'm going to show you that I'm able by myself to take you through and to give you the victory. Yeah. See, the problem is, is that we're looking for somebody else to bring us out and only God can get us out. Right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, so he said, now, I need you to go in that strength. He said, but the first thing I need you to do is I need you to tear down some stuff. Uh, uh, I need you to tear down all of this stuff that you've been worshiping, your dad's been worshiping, everybody in the whole town has gone after this God, Bell. He said, well, I want you to go and I want you to tear it all down, and then I want you to build an altar to me. All right. I know this don't make no sense to nobody but me, but, but I pray that God's going to reveal it to you while I'm talking. Is it that, that there's some stuff that you got built up in your life that God said, I'm sending, I'm sending some wrecking crew to tear down. And he said, once I tear it down, then I want you to build an altar to me, and then I want you to sacrifice on that altar. But the Bible said Gideon was scared. But watch God build trust in Gideon. Gideon wouldn't do it in the daytime. He waited till nighttime. He called some men together. They tore down the altar. Yes. And they offered up a sacrifice uh -huh. unto God. Yes. See, I don't care if it's in the day or in the night, but when you, when the Lord asks you to do something, you ought to do it. Yes. Amen. If he tells you to put some stuff away, you ought to put it away. Put it away. Amen. If he tells you to stop doing something, stop. you ought to stop doing it. Because the problem that we have is because of our disobedience, yes. we go through some stuff. Yes. And even in our obedience, we go through some stuff. But I'm going to go through the stuff that I'm going through with God than without it. Yes. Bible said that when they check it the next morning, they want to know who done it. See, somebody got to be bold enough to, to, to be able to, to tear it down and not be scared and worried about what's going to happen. Because the Bible said when they found out it was Gideon, the people came up against Gideon for doing what was right. I, I want to I challenge somebody that, that even when folk come up against you for doing right, you ought to do right anyway. Even if they ostracize you, they won't talk to you no more. They don't want to have nothing to do with you no more. If you know you've done right, you ought to have a peace about you. Yeah. Yeah. And so they came and said, we get ready to kill your son Gideon. And the daddy said, well, if Baal is a god, let Baal answer for himself. Why you gotta go fighting Baal battles? 
See, the problem that we have is that we try to fight everybody's battle. We try, we try to pull everybody out, and, and, and we and we're about to be destroyed ourselves trying to fight somebody else's battle. Well, have you have you ever been to the point where 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 somebody didn't like somebody, but they would throw somebody else in the fight to try to get them to pull down? They the one throwing the rock, but they'll hide their hand. Yeah, yeah. Y'all ain't, yeah. ain't never experienced that. I, I'm talking about haters on every side, but I thank God that even when the haters show up, God said, "You, you, you. If you want, you fight me, sin." <laughs> and so they stood back and, and thought that Baal would take take Gideon down, but nothing happened to Gideon because if God is for you. He's more than the whole world of this shit. And I, I want to tell somebody that God is on your side today. And all he's doing is building trust. And every time you go through the things that you go through and you rely on God, God said, I'm building some trust in you. To the point that after a while, that all everything that you need to do, you'll call on me about it. You'll, you'll ask me to do it for you. You'll trust me in the midst of it. And you won't get ahead of me because you will acknowledge me. Yeah. In everything that you do. What is it now? That means that before you make a decision, you'll ask God about it. Before you do anything, you'll say, God, is this what I'm supposed to do? And then you'll wait for an answer. You won't get in a hurry and think that you got to have it tomorrow because if you wait on the Lord and you be a good courage, He will strengthen your heart. Why are you waiting? Because he that shall come will come and he won't tarry. If you wait on him, he'll he'll show you that that it was worth the wait because because sometimes he'll let some stuff go past you that you thought you should have had because that ain't what you need. Amen. Amen. That's right, man. If anybody praise God, he lets some stuff pass by. Yes, Amen. So, <laughs> I get an amen out of these bulls here in a minute. <laughs> so, so he, 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 sends, he sends Gideon to fight. Yeah. And the Bible said, he said, tell, he said, Gideon, call the people and tell them we're ready to fight. I need some folk to come fight for me. And when the numbers showed up, there were 32,000 people showed up. But the Midianites and the, and the Amalekites, they had over 125,000. Uh -huh. With 32,000, they were already out yeah. Can I tell you that what I need you to understand is that the problem that we have is that we lean to our own understanding and we start counting one, two, three, four, five, six, and you started out wrong. You started to count out wrong because the first count should have been God first. That's right. And that should have ended the count. Yeah. Because if God is on your side, he's more than the whole world against you. And when we start learning how to, to depend on God and trust God, our first count will be the count on God. Yeah. When you look at a neighbor somewhere and say, you ought to be counting on God. You ought to be counting on God. So, so what happened was is that when the 32,000 showed up, God looked at them and said, you got too many folks. He said, in order for me to build trust, I, I, I got I to gotta break it down to build it up. So the Bible said, he said, now tell everybody that's scared and everybody that, that, that's weak in heart, tell them to go home. It reminds me of the story of the church packed. Choir stand packed. Church packed. And all of a sudden, while the sermon was going on and the preacher was standing up, the door in the middle door is busted open. And men in black with ski masks on, with, with guns in their hands, said, Everybody up in this house that want to save your life, get out of here. And the, and the choir dispersed. Left one tenor in the choir stand. 
looked on both sides, there was only two or three people on each side, and the preacher left the stage. Some of the associate ministers hit the side door. <laughs> and when everybody had cleared, the mask then pulled the mask off and sat down and said, okay now, preacher, go ahead and preach. We done got rid of all the folks that didn't even trust God, and we're going to have church now. See, sometimes, 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 in, in the challenge of, our, of us talking about that we are Christian, that sometimes it's going to be challenged. Do you really trust it? All right. Amen. Yes. But their trust was as cut. They remind me of the young lady on call by when the combine, when, they, when the boys went in and they were shooting up everything. And they, and they got, they found one little girl, and they said, if, if you deny that you love Jesus Christ, we'll let you live. And she said, no, I, I will not deny that I know that I know the Lord, and they killed her right then. But she stood on, she loved God enough that she, that she would not deny. She trusted God enough that even if it being taken her life, that she was not going to deny who it is. But I wonder sometimes, and I, as, as hard as we're talking, as much as we sing, as much as we do, if, 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 our, if our faith was challenged, will we stand the test? Because it's one thing to say what we're going to do. It's another thing to do what we say we're going to do. Yes. And so I'm done, I'm done now. He said 32,000. And when, when they told him to go home, 22,000 left. <laughs> Look at God breaking it down. Because, because too many times we trusted it in numbers. And God said, no, I don't need you to trust the number because you and me, we're, we're, we're a majority by ourselves. That's right. And so 10,000 left. And the Lord came back again and said, still too many. He said, but this time, I'm going to separate. See, I, I need somebody to understand that God is doing some separating. God is doing some things that he's pulling some folk away from your life. He's pulling some things away from you because it ain't, it ain't to hurt you. It's to build you. That's why they had to stop calling. That, that's why the cell phone ain't, ain't and the text is not coming in like they used to because God is doing some separating. Because he's helping you to understand you can't trust in some of the friends that you think you can trust in, but you can trust in me. If you got friends in your life and they always trying to get you to do wrong, that's the wrong friends. If you got somebody trying to talk you into living right and doing right and making some right decisions, then you ought to keep them in your life. But if you got some folks that's always trying to come on, man. Man, you done you changed on me. You ought to start shouting right there and start saying, yeah, I have changed. Thank God it ain't going the same way because I have seen ten friends die like that. Yes, so, he said, I want you to take them down to the water. When you get them to the water, he said, now, you're going to stand back and you're going to watch. See, see, sometimes, sometimes you don't need to get too close. Sometimes you need to step back. You need to take a step back, yes. and you need to be observant. Yes, my God. Yes. And watch how God handy work start working in your life when you when sometimes you're too close to it. Yeah. And you're all up on it, and you can't see the flaws because you're too close. So you have to back up sometimes so you can get a panoramic view and you can see it from all sides. Oh, yes. And God said, the ones that you see, they get down on their knee and drink water. You put them on one side. And the ones that reach down and put their hand and put their hand to their mouth and drink, he said, you put them to the other side. And 9,000 
700 got down on the knees and started drinking water. He said, those 9,700 not going with you. He said, but the ones that were standing and reaching down and drinking and laughing like a dog, he said, those 300, you take it with you. And the reason why he said those 300 is because they, while they were drinking, they were watching. See, the problem is, is that too many of us have got our head so far down, we can't see what's up. All right. But these guys were like this right here, because they were always watching, because they didn't never know where something was going to drive us. All right. Look at your neighbor tell me you better watch. Because, because, because while you trust in God, God will always send you a signal and let you know. Yes, sir. But if you got your head down and you got it buried in the sand, you can't see nothing but. But when you got your eyes open, you'll start seeing some stuff. You're like, hey, wait a minute. Yeah. <laughs> and God said, with these 300 men, I'm going to give you the victory. And the Bible said that he told them to get a, get a trumpet, yeah. get a torch, and get an empty picture. Uh, and we go in the back. Uh, but he said, now, I need to build some more trust in Gideon. He said, now, Gideon, if you're still scared, I want you to go down to the camp and hear what they said about you. Okay. See, the problem is you don't even know, you don't even know what God got people saying about you. All right. You're thinking you lose it, and God said that you really don't know what, what I'm saying, what they got, what they talking about. Yeah. See, you thought you thought that you messed up rolling, but God said, I got some people talking about you. And the Bible said when they got down there, they, they told a dream. And in the dream, he said they saw a barley cake rolling through the camp. And it was nine down ten. And one of them gave the interpretation and said, oh, that ain't nothing but Gideon and his army coming to knock us down. And Gideon heard this. See, I just come and tell you that God said that he's given you the power to knock some stuff down. And all you got to do is just hear the word of the Lord and get some confidence and trust God that he may not come when I want him to come, but he'll show up on time.
thing was they put the trumpet to their mouth. And there's only two times that they blew the trumpet. One was for war and one was for praise. And I want to tell you that the war was already being fought. So they put the trumpet to stop praising God.
even if you have made Jesus your choice and, and you say yes to it, ain't nothing wrong with coming back and saying, Lord, I, 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 I repent again. I, I want you, I want you to, to live in me. I want you to forgive me for whatever I've done that would even get in the way of my relationship with you. They already sunk a guess. Anything? Take it out. Is there anyone in this building this morning who knows that you need God to restore some things? You need God to move some things out of your life. The things that every time you turn around, you look at it and say, why in the world is this still here? Why do I keep still doing this when I know it ain't what I need to be doing? I want to be better. I want to do better. I want to be better. And the only way I can do that is I got to trust God. I got to trust Him. I got to believe that He's more than He's more than what I what I can, I can imagine. He's all that I need. That's a personal step. Would you? Is there anyone else? I need it. I need it more and more each day. I need Him to help me. That when I want to go off, that he won't, he'll help me that I won't go off. It's just a step of faith. That's all it is. It's just a step of faith. Don't worry. Don't worry about what everybody else is saying, what everybody else is doing. This is personal. I'm just talking about me. I ain't talking about nobody else. I know I need it. Because sometimes the frustration builds so much to the point I be like, man, I'm through it all. Man. But then he'll come back and say, no, I'm tearing some stuff down. That's all. I'm just tearing some stuff down. Is there anybody that's standing at this altar who's not saved, who haven't given God your heart? Is there anybody that's standing at the altar that's vacillating that you want Jesus to change and bring him and restore you back? Lord, in the name of Jesus, I bind it up in the name of Jesus. Healing is the children's voice. I know y'all came for one thing. Let us agree with Sister Sister Kathy right now. Father, in the name of Jesus, we say yes to your will and your way. Mighty are the works of your hand. Lord, to even press the way to come to this altar and press the way into the house. Don't let her leave the same way she came. Name. Father, in, in the name of Jesus, every soul that is standing at this altar that have come from one thing or the next, Lord, I pray that you would search our heart. You know the intent of our heart. And Lord, we want to be better. We want to live holy. Renew in us a right spirit. Created us a clean heart. Help us that we might walk upright before you. That we might be able to do what you would have us to do. We ask for forgiveness, Lord, for the things that we have allowed. But we bring it before you and ask that you, Lord, tear it down, that you might build it up the way you would have it. We say yes to your will and we walk away from our own desires. Every person in our life, Lord God, that you didn't bring there, that we try to make be there that's not supposed to be there. 
here, Lord. We give you permission to tear it down. Show us where we're supposed to go and what we're supposed to do. Give us a listening ear to hear what you would have us to hear. And then to do what you would have us to do. We love you, Lord, and we thank you that this day, God, we renew our relationship with you. And we ask that you would come in in a greater way. Awaken our heart and our spirit. That when you speak to us, God, that we will hear and we will obey. And we're going to praise you right now in advance for the victory that we already received, Lord. Change us from the inside out. Help us to see with eyes of faith. And help us to walk in that same faith. In Jesus' name. And all of God's people say amen. Would you encourage your brother and sister? And would, would you just hug somebody, shake somebody's hand, and just declare it is done in Jesus' name? There we go.
He didn't, he didn't scold. He didn't do all of these things. He just extended all of them. Home don't always mean joining the church. Home means that you're secure in the things of God. And sister, we want you to know that even though we are preacher's kids and all of this stuff, we all do. And thank God this morning that you came to this house and you listened to the Uber driver and that you were obedient to the Spirit of God. Because God is what we your home. And all we're doing is just being the arms of God and the shoulder of God. And as you are looking and as you are being received, just know that these are the arms of God receiving you back home and that you know that you're safe in this home. That's all we want to do. We just want to love on you. Real love on you. Amen. The only thing we're doing right now is we're just letting them know that she is okay at home. We're not trying to do anything else. We're not, we're not all that all up about members because we have things going to be all right. I need to ask you to pray for us while we while we see. They extended the hood and overnight. And we want to remember uh, Sister Ferguson going to a bird. She got in Boston to be home this week. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Let me say what I'm saying. I'm going to be done. Even from a little girl, a little girl, a little girl, it was prophesied to you and to your parents. But the enemy got in the middle of all these things that was prophesied to you. And he tried, to, he tried to do everything he could do to try to make you feel like that you failed and that you were nowhere, that you ain't even worthy. But I come to let you know that everything that was prophesied, everything that was seen. Ain't that changed from here to where you are now. And God, and God has had, had to have, had to go through the point of tearing some things down, breaking some things down. And, and, and what I do know is, is that you heard everything your daddy said. And, you, and, and his voice is still speaking now while we're standing here. And all I'm telling you is, is that even though your father is not here, you have a heavenly father that's standing right here with you. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. And he said, I approve this. I approve this. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord. I approve this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Reverend Johnson is going to pray Lord. with you, but this God is doing the work of God. Yes, Lord. Yes, there's promise. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
we can follow what the Holy Spirit, Lord. Hallelujah. The Holy Spirit will speak, Lord God. And we just say, thank you, Lord God. Lord God, we thank you for welcoming us back home, Lord God. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord, because you're restoring, Lord God. Hallelujah. You're renewing. You're reviving, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, that you're healing, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord, those broken places, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. You're mending, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, because you're a potter, Lord God. You're putting us back together again. And Lord, we say thank you, Lord God. We praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah, because you're a creator, Lord God. And you know how to do it, Lord God. You know how to put us back together, Lord God. And we just say thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, because you're awesome in all your ways, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, that things will not be the same, Lord God. For this young lady, Lord God, that things will be better than they have been, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Because she's going to be walking in newness of life, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that you're right there with her, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, that you're giving us strength even now, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. And we thank you and we praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah, she's going to be a leader, Lord God. Hallelujah, she's going to bring others to Christ. And Lord, we just say thank you right now, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God. We give you glory, we give you honor, Lord God. Hallelujah, we thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, revive us again, Lord. Revive us again, Lord. Hallelujah, we say thank you, Lord. Lord God, I pray that you look on Sister Ferguson, Lord God. Hallelujah, as she goes for her test, Lord God. Lord God, we know that you have already, Lord God, made a way. Lord God, we know that everything is all right already, Lord God. And we say thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, that all is well, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, that it's going to be a wonderful test, Lord God. There are going to be good results. And we thank you, Lord God. We bless you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God, I ask that you bless our pastor on today, Lord God. Touch him, Lord God. Hallelujah, everything, Lord God, that he stands in need of. We thank you, Lord God, for doing it right now, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for healing every area that needs to be healed, Lord God. We thank you, Lord, that the blood of Jesus is doing it right now, Lord God. Hallelujah, everything is coming in line, Lord God.
Thank you for your power. Thank you for your strength. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your grace. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes. Okay. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for the yes. Thank you for the yes, Lord.